What is up, guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, and children of all ages? What is up, ladies and girls, boys and gentlemen, and everyone in between? I am so glad you decided to join us at So Hills Kids. That's right, we're kids. We're at So Hills, or we're online. And we're glad that you're here, no matter where you're watching, from Alaska to China to J Japan to Africa to Europe to... Sorry, I got distracted. Anyways, what matters is that you're watching, and I'm glad you've chosen to watch today. Today is a big one. Today's a big story. We've been talking about how creation glorifies God for the past three weeks, and now we're going to see what happens when creation, or us, try and take things into our own hands. It's not, a, it's not a fun story, but I want you guys to think about times where you've made a choice that you wish you could take back. Threw that thing in the living room that you knew you shouldn't have and knocked over the lamp. Or you said that thing about someone that really hurt their feelings. Or you did something and you got grounded for like a whole month. Whatever it is, we've all had experiences where we want to take something back. And I think Adam and Eve felt that very same thing. So we're going to talk about that today. But first, we're going to play a little game. And it's going to be a little mental exercise for you guys, okay? So here's the game. I'm going to give you a solution right a solution to a problem and you have to figure out what the problem is okay so i'm going to give you something that's happened and i'm going to give you the best possible solution for that issue okay so um we're going to go into our first one remember you have to guess what the problem what the accident or the situation is by my solution okay and I can't tell you what it is, so you have to guess. We're going to go to our first one, okay? So my solution for this one is to go to them um, and apologize uh, and tell them I really didn't mean it um, and that I was just frustrated and I let my emotions get the best of me. And I told them that they can have time to forgive me if they need um, and whenever they're ready to talk, they can. You got to guess? I guess that's what happened. Yeah, I said something that I didn't want to say, or I didn't mean to say, or I meant to say, but it was just not kind, right? I said something that hurt somebody's feelings, and so my solution was to apologize, to make up for it, and give them time to forgive me. All right, here's another one, okay? I go tell, them, tell my parents. I, I let them know that I broke it, and I can't fix it, and knew I wasn't supposed to do what I did, but I still did it, and that I'm very sorry. Any guesses? Any guesses? That's right, I broke something in the house. I kind of like gave it away a little bit, sorry, this is actually kind of hard, but I broke something in the house, I was doing something I shouldn't, probably playing baseball or whatever, and I knocked over a picture frame, it fell and broke, and I tried to fix it, and I think we've all been there, we've tried to fix something that we broke, and it just, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Um, okay, last one. I have to apologize to my parents again um, and own what I did or what I didn't do um, and say that I'll try next time and I'll do it now um, and do what I should have done before uh, and next time do my best to listen um, and obey. This one's kind of tricky. I tried to be really vague with this one. Any guesses? Any guesses? Yeah, my parents told me to do something and I didn't. So I cleaned my room and I didn't clean my room. And so I got in trouble and, you know, I didn't do what I was supposed to do. So to apologize and to try and make this situation better, I would go clean my room and tell them I'll work on doing it better next time and listening the first time. So whatever it is we do, whether it's... Uh, not listen to our parents or throw a ball in the house or upset a friend with our words. It's just consequences to our actions. And today we're going to learn, well, the biggest consequence, consequence to our actions. Um, and that's with Adam and Eve. And it's not a fun story, but we have the story. So we're going to watch the video for the story. And then we're going to loop back around here, guys. And we're going to discuss what it means. Okay? So I'll see you guys after that. God gave the first two people a beautiful garden to call home. He gave them everything they needed, and he gave them a command. 
God said, you may eat from any of the trees in the garden, except for one. The garden had a tree in it called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God warned the man, if you eat from that tree, you will die. Now, the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals. One day, the serpent went to the woman. Did God really say you can't eat from any tree in the garden? He asked. The woman answered, We can eat the fruit from the trees in the garden, but God told us not to eat from the tree in the middle of the garden. He said if we eat the fruit or touch it, we will die. No, you will not die, the serpent lied. You will be like God, knowing good and evil. The woman looked at the fruit. It did look delicious, and she wanted to be wise. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew that they were naked. So they sewed together fig leaves and made clothes for themselves. That evening, the man and his wife heard God walking in the garden. They hid among the trees. God called out to the man, Where are you? The man said, I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Who told you that you were naked? God asked. Did you eat from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man blamed his wife. She gave me some of the fruit from the tree, and, and I ate it, he said. The woman blamed the serpent. He tricked me, she said. God said bad things would happen. Life would be hard and painful, all because of sin. But God promised that one of the woman's descendants would destroy the serpent. God made those first people, Adam and Eve, clothes out of animal skins and sent them out of the garden. God put angels and a sword of fire at the entrance of the garden to guard the way to the tree of life. Ever since Adam and Eve sinned, all people have been sinners. Our sin separates us from God, but God still loves us. God promised a rescuer would come from Eve's family. God sent his son, Jesus, to rescue people from sin and bring them back to God. Guys, that's a tough story, isn't it? Adam and Eve were, were tricked, right? The serpent, or Satan himself, went to Eve and he actually twisted God's word. He changed things around and made Eve think that maybe she could make a better choice than God, right? Um, and that's ultimately our struggle, right? What is sin, guys? We have that question last, uh, the last three weeks we talked about uh, why did God create everything? He created it for our glory in his, or his glory in our good, right? So today, we're, or this, these next few weeks, we're going to discuss what is sin. And sin is anything. Um, from our thoughts, to our actions, to our behaviors, or any way that we act that disobeys one of God's commands. And it can look like a lot of different things, um, from an unkind word, to disobeying our parents, to you know slipping something in your pocket at the store. All of those are wrong. So that's what sin is, and that's what entered the world, right? We see the serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals, and he asked the woman, did God really say, you must not eat the fruit of any tree in the garden. So we see the animal come and, and twist God's word, right? Eve says, of course, uh, we may eat anyone in the garden. And the one replied, it's only the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. He said, you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. But you won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be open, and as soon as you eat it, you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. So you see, the serpent or Satan, he wanted us to think that we could be like God. So sin entered the world after Adam and Eve ate that apple, right? And it wasn't because there was something magical in this fruit 
um, or something magical in uh, whatever that is, sin entered because Adam and Eve chose to eat the fruit. Because Adam and Eve made a choice to disobey God. There wasn't a magical sin potion in the fruit. There wasn't, you know, whatever. It was their choice that created sin. And when it boils down to it, all of our sin, guys, it really comes down to one thing. And it's when we want to take the place of God, right? When we want to make the choice that we think is better for us, right? Our parents tell us to clean the room, but we want to keep playing video games because we enjoy video games more than cleaning our room, right? We say something unkind to a friend because we are upset and we want them to know that. We cheat on a test because we don't want to have to work hard and study and we want to take the easy way out. You see, us as humans, we're kind of the common running theme of sin. When sin entered the world, it corrupted us and we started choosing ourselves over others and over God. And that's where sin really came. And so Adam and Eve were banished from the garden, right? Um, and, and their labors were increased and things got harder for them because of sin. The world itself was corrupted and it was a bad bad day but there's some good news right there is some good news that we see here in the bible even though adam and eve got banished even though they sinned and they failed and they messed up god still had a plan you see from the very beginning god had a plan send jesus his son to crush the head of satan that's actually what it says here in genesis right um, so we have been wounded, right? We have fallen to sin. Sin has corrupted the world. But Jesus is coming, and Jesus has come. Jesus came and crushed sin on the cross when he died for our sins. So when we accept Jesus, when we believe him to be our Lord and Savior, then he crushes the power of sin in our lives, and we seek after him then, right? And we can never be perfect like Jesus was perfect, but we can strive for that perfection. Or what, what strive means is work, right? Work towards, head towards that perfection. And you are best to live like Jesus, loving God and loving others. So despite the fall, despite the horrible story and the bad news and all of the tragedy that followed because of this fall, we still know that there is a Savior out there, Jesus, who loves us, and cares for us and wants the best for us no matter what. And that is truly a blessing, guys. So no matter what, no matter how hard of a day or how bad of a week or how terrible of a year you've had, Jesus is still king. Jesus still loves you. He still cares for you and he wants the best for you. From the beginning, this was God's plan and we've seen it played out in Jesus Christ now. So. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this week. And even though it's a sad week, it's a week that we get to be reminded that Jesus is still on the throne. That God rules over everything, and no matter our sin, He still loves us. So with that, I hope you guys have a great day and a great week. And I cannot wait to see you next week as we dive into more of the stories that this book brings us. With that, I'll see you guys later. Bye.